I'm Maggie O'Halloran, one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living, and we're going to talk about hibiscus today. Hibiscus has a long history of use, and there are lots of different varieties of plants within that family. Um, the Malviaceae family, some that you probably know about are cotton and okra and marshmallow that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. In hibiscus, whenever you're thinking about hibiscus, um, make sure you drop your questions below, uh, like, comment is with all of your questions, let me know if you're growing any of those plants in the Malvaceae family. And we are in my backyard here in Central Florida in an urban herbal oasis as you can tell by the sounds I don't know if you can but there's a pressure washer happening nearby uh, so I'm really grateful for all the plants that are growing here and thank you for joining us and taking a look at one plant two different varieties that we have growing here one is a cranberry hibiscus is a common name and this is hibiscus Acetacella, and this one is a variety that tastes really delicious. Those leaves are really yummy and teas. I like to nibble on them occasionally. They have a nice vitamin C tart punch to them. Historically, however, the hibiscus that you read about and experience in different teas, we're getting up real close to this plant right here, is Hibiscus sabdorifa, and this hibiscus sabdorifa plant would actually like to be in a lot more sun. They really prefer full sun, and this is my attempt at giving it a chance to grow in my backyard instead of the front, and it really prefers more sun than it has access to here. And we're thinking about hibiscus tea or those other traditional uses of hibiscus. We're talking about the calyx. So the calyx, this plant has a beautiful flower, and I have a photo that we'll show you in a few minutes, but this plant has a beautiful flower, and once the flower dies and falls off, we're left with the calyx. The sepals of the flower are left, and this is the aspect of the plant that we're talking about today, and using hibiscus um, in either tea or in historical medicinal qualities that it has. So these calyx are in perfect size for us to work with. Thank you, little hibiscus sabdorifa. It's the calyx that we're going to use. And we'll go over to the table, and we'll look more deeply at this, and we'll talk about it. Hibiscus sabdorifa. Hamica, Roselle sorrel. This plant has been used um, for a very long time and is recently been studied for a lot of its qualities and it's found to be used in over 10 countries around the world um, still in their traditional herbal medicine. Hibiscus sabdorifa, the calyx, um, is known as a refrigerant so You'll find it in a lot of really tasty beverages during the summertime because that refrigerant quality will really help cool you down. It's really cooling and moistening. It's a really fantastic plant to utilize for any hot experience or dry experience. So that cooling and moistening quality. And when you are, I have a whole jar full of dried calices here. And you can tell by that wonderful color that it's high in antioxidants. That dark red purple color just lets us know that it's high in antioxidants, bioflavonoids, and as I mentioned before, it is really high in vitamin C. So it's because of those qualities that it's been studied uh, for its anti-inflammatory properties, it's cardioprotective properties, neuroprotective properties, and hepatoprotective qualities. And hepatoprotective just means that that protects the liver. And a lot of the plants that we utilize 
can be hepatoprotective for a lot of different reasons. One of the reasons that hibiscus sabdorifa calices are found to be hepatoprotective is their ability to move blood through the body. And anything with high vitamin C qualities is going to help move things through. You know if you've ever had too much vitamin C, it moves your digestive tract really quickly as well. So that high vitamin C quality helps with the blood purifying qualities um, in moving the blood through the body. So in these studies, um, it's found that it's good for heart disease or high cholesterol. And we know in recent studies about cholesterol that some of the, the research is showing that cholesterol is actually the body's way of responding to stress. So a nice cup of hibiscus tea can really help in alleviating some of the stress in your life and cool you down. Traditionally, it was found to lower blood pressure. And I don't know about you, but having a nice cold beverage helps to lower my blood pressure on its own. Have you incorporated hibiscus tea into your life? Tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. The blood pressure lowering qualities um, is found usually in a daily tea. So when I'm thinking about a daily tea, I like to think of my favorite ways of having a daily tea. And I'll just show you this calyx close up as I'm building my tea. So you, the calyx would be just this outer part and you can tell in the dried version the, the calyx that can be tasty eaten just like this, but whenever you get the tea, that's what you're getting is the outside part of the calyx. There are recipes out there that incorporate just the calyx, but other recipes include chopping up the inner ovum or the inside of the calyx. So this can be dried, or I can go ahead and put it in my tea. If you're interested in learning more about working with the calyx and a recipe, I want to I show you a couple of sources for working with hibiscus in food. So Rosemary Gladstar has this collaborative effort book all about fire cider. And within this book, we have a recipe by herbalist Juliet Blankaspor, where she talks about using hibiscus and fire cider, which is typically a really hot and spicy immune boosting tonic that can be cooled down just a little bit, soften around the edges and add a little bit of extra vitamin C through using hibiscus. You have to check out the book to find out the, the recipe there or, or explore um, Juliet Blankaspor's website through Chestnut School of Herbal Medicine and learn about that. I have also a picture here, like I mentioned before, that hibiscus sabdorifa really likes full sun and you can see that it can grow to five to six feet tall. Here is an image of that beautiful flower, and you can see the flower has grown and it's about to fall off, and then what are left are these calices, which we harvested. So there are two different ways of making tea. One that I incorporate into my life pretty much every day is putting plant material into a container and adding hot water, letting it sit for five to 20 minutes, depending on what you're trying to extract from that plant material. And then removing the plant material, in this case, a French press pot, I just press it down and then I pour my tea. Another way that hibiscus is used is by making a decoction. A friend of mine loves to make 
a drink with hibiscus around the holidays that she calls Sorel. And she's always correcting me on how I pronounce it, and I'm not saying it. Um, comment below if you know what this is or any keys to making sure I'm pronouncing it accurately. But sorrel or sorrel is something that is often made around the holidays. So it's more of a warm beverage or warmed to um, heat up the herbs and spices that go with it and then cooled and, and consumed in that way. This requires a decoction method. So I mentioned the infusion where you're just adding hot water to your plant material letting it steep and then straining it. Whereas a decoction is where you're putting plant material into a pot and hibiscus blends really beautifully with things like cinnamon or ginger. And you're just taking your spices and you're adding it to that hibiscus into a pot and you're letting it simmer for 10 minutes and then straining out the plant material and serving it either warm or cold. This can be really delicious. And remember those wonderful blood uh, pressure balancing qualities, the antioxidants, high vitamin C, can be a really lovely way to remain really healthy through the holidays. There are products that you can buy out in commerce and one is this brand, and I wanted to show you this picture. So this is a picture of a Tulsi hibiscus tea box that I found. And in the ingredients, it says that it has uh, Tulsi, which is a, a beautiful plant that we use the leaves and flowering tops for tea. And then it says it has hibiscus flowers but you know, by looking at this image, that those are actually the calices. Those are not the flowers. So often when you're getting your tea blend, it might say flowers, but this is actually the calices of that, of that wonderful hibiscus sabdorifa. So growing hibiscus in central Florida is very easy. You basically put the seeds in the ground around April, and then you have these wonderful Kaylee seeds around October. It's like one of the things in my life that I find to be clockwork. If you live a little bit further north, know that hibiscus is going to need to be protected from the cold. Really doesn't like it very much. And even here in Central Florida, it might die back during the winter because it really doesn't want to be below about 50 degrees, which happens occasionally here. So growing hibiscus, you can use those leaves. They're edible, delicious in salads. You can use the leaves in the tea blends. If you want to really access those anti-inflammatory qualities, the high vitamin C content and the historical uses of um, supporting blood pressure and balancing the cholesterol. You want to make sure you have the calices and you can either get those fresh or dried um, so that you have access to them year round if you're drying it. If you are growing it yourself, you'll take the calices apart like I demonstrated before, and you'll leave this to dry. And it takes a little bit longer. These are um, thicker, so it takes a little longer to dehydrate them. I might actually uh, use my dehydrator to dehydrate them instead of just leaving them out in the air conditioning um, to let it dehydrate. You can also nibble them. They're pretty tasty. Um, nice tart flavor. Any questions, make sure you comment below. Thank you for joining me in the garden today to talk about hibiscus sabdorifa and our local cranberry hibiscus, hibiscus acetosello, that is also really high in vitamin C. Those leaves are pretty tasty. The calices are useful 
they're a lot smaller, so I really like to access the calyces of the Hibiscus sabdoritha. So thank you for joining us in the backyard today, and we look forward to seeing you next time.